Let's get this party started on a Saturday night. <clears throat> I am drinking tea because my throat's filled with phlegm. Poopyondo, I'm, I'm Professor Nix, here to inform you that due to the chaotic magical energy contained within this video, you may be viewing footage from alternate timelines. Please don't be concerned. My team is working on this as we speak. Enjoy your video! Well met, internet. I have spent this entire week drenched in nostalgia in preparation for this video. It is why I look like this. I am channeling my 14 year old slash 15 year old self and uh, I just wanna put it out there. Lip gloss is disgusting and it's the worst part of everything I'm wearing right now, including this actual dog collar with a tiny fake gun on it. I did a poll over on Twitter about what you wanted me to discuss in this video, and you chose my first record to my sisters that I recorded in my freshman year of high school. Music has always been with me. When my mom was pregnant with me, my dad would play guitar for her, and apparently I would move over to the side of her uterus that was closest to him playing. So you could say that music was in my life even before I was. I grew up with my dad and brothers playing in a band together. You can see here me helping my dad play guitar when I am a toddler. In this one, I think I'm about two, and in this one, I think I'm maybe three or four years old. My parents got divorced when I was eight, and though my mom got primary custody, I would spend my visits with my dad writing songs together. Over time, this evolved into me writing songs on my own. I remember getting really into it when I was about 10, as I had just seen the 2001 comic book to movie adaptation of Josie and the Pussycats, which I attribute about 60% of my personality and goals. I saw that movie and I was like, holy crap, I wanna be Josie. Please let me be Josie immediately, hence this photo. I started writing songs about my life, my friends, my misguided understanding of what adult relationships were like that I gleaned from pop music. As I got older, my songs became confessionals for me, a place for me to deal with the complex emotions I was having about my first relationships or my bisexuality. I was really inspired by bands like Bowling for Soup, and Good Charlotte, who helped me maintain a healthy sense of humor when I was talking about darker topics. Or Avril Lavigne, who had an irreverent approach to the way she spoke about the world. Avril was actually my first real concert. And honestly, I have no regrets. I had a great time. I remember the exact outfit I wore. Though my connection to my dad has always been music, my connection with my mom has always been through theater and costumes and fashion, stuff like that. When I was about 13, my mom got a job working at the American Music Theater in Lancaster County and started making connections in sort of like the independent music scene that was a part of that theater. So that meant my mom had access to people who owned recording studios. Specifically, there was a gentleman in upper management at AMT, who I'll call John, I won't completely out him, I don't know if he still works there. But John had a studio in his basement, and for Christmas 2004, perhaps the coolest present a parent could ever give a teenager, my mom gave me studio time. Like, eight hours of studio time. Eight hours is nothing when it comes to recording an album, and to be honest, I have spent probably more than eight hours just on singular songs since, but back then it was just me and my out-of-tune acoustic guitar and my incredible Schecter Diamond series with pink and purple flames on it, seen here. I'm a little bit older here, I'm about 17, so it's honestly considerably after when I recorded to my sisters, but the guitar remains the same. I named it Haruko-san after one of the lead characters in my favorite anime, Fully Coolie. Fully Coolie, you do it like this with your hands. When I first stepped in that studio, I felt like a superstar. I felt like I was going somewhere. John made me feel really comfortable and he even showed me how to mix some of the songs. He seemed genuinely enthusiastic about helping me figure out what was going on and instructing me about the process. That little seed of information that he gave me was able to grow over time into my ability to record music myself. Once the track list was decided and these songs were recorded with help from a friend of mine who knew how to play piano, I was confronted with the obstacle of how I was going to release this thing. My 
solution that I decided on was getting colored slimline jewel cases and writing my name and the album title on it in colorful Sharpie depicted here in a photo because I don't have a copy anymore. And in that slimline jewel case, there was a little printout that listed the tracks as well as sort of the credit for the songwriting. My mom wanted me to charge people $5 for the CD when I sold them, but I felt uncomfortable charging that much. So I decided to sell them for $2 a piece. But how to advertise the release of my first official album? Well, I had an idea for that. And that idea was convince my boyfriend who worked on the announcements to play the best song on the record on said announcements. And guess what? It worked. It also helped that I wore a t-shirt that said Haley Jane to my sisters by my CD and Sharpie. That feeling of sitting in homeroom hearing my song over the loudspeakers surrounded by my peers was honestly indescribable. I don't know necessarily if I can put it into words, so I think the best way to explain it would be t-shirt I actually sold a few copies and that was my first taste of the music money exchange but this was just the beginning of the journey that To My Sisters was going to take me on. In the spring of 2005, I played some songs off the record at my high school's coffee house. And though I don't remember if it was my first time playing on stage, I do remember it was my first time playing on stage with an album to promote. There I was, standing on stage, it was a carpet on the cafeteria floor, singing my songs and people were liking it. They were clapping for me. They were responding to my banter between them. And at the end of that set, I said, buy my CD. And then people did. I don't remember if I sold out all the copies, but I do remember selling way more of them than I thought I would. It was absolutely beyond me that people were spending their hard-earned lunch money on my art. Honestly, it's still kind of beyond me that people spend their hard-earned lunch money on my art. What I didn't realize then was my mother's blind faith in and encouragement of me was making my radical actions seem logical. Of course I was making a record. Of course I would duplicate and distribute that record myself. Of course I would wear a t-shirt that said buy my CD written across it. Her encouragement led me to get a taste of my own success and show me what success really looks like. It's easy in the age of social media where we're constantly bombarded by these images of luxury to diminish the successes that I've had in my life. Success isn't always millions of dollars. Success often isn't millions of dollars. My success is a crowd of people at a steampunk house party singing along to my songs and remembering every word. My success is messages from people who tell me that my album helped them through dark times in their lives. My success is a video of a fan of mine's preschool aged daughter playing me a song on her ukulele because she liked my ukulele songs. My success is years of fans and followers sticking through platform changes, genre changes, fashion changes, and name changes. To My Sisters is no record-breaking, spectacular feat of virtuoso. I sound 14. The lyrics can get a little... Ugh. If you want to know what I'm talking about, check out my Patreon where I post the lyrics of a song called Legal Girls that I am so embarrassed of. It honestly makes me physically uncomfortable to say the title of it. But I made it on my own terms. It was my first taste of the recording process and my first taste of selling art directly to fans. I wouldn't change it for the world. Plus, to be honest, songs are still fire.
so much for spending this time with me. Like, comment, and share if you believe, and I will see you guys next week. Cool. Beyondo! It's over.